Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to have a look at Cardano and its pricing on the charts, plus some of the news that's come out over the last 24 hours, particularly Cardano being launched on Coinbase Pro. This is officially from NASDAQ, and of course it's on Coinbase Pro's website as well. So we're gonna dive into that and just check out the charts and what is going on with it. We're expecting a bit of a pump on Cardano not much has happened after such big news. So what is to come for Cardano? We're gonna jump into that. But first, you know what to do, hit that like button down below. Let's get the video to 3000 likes. It goes a long way to helping out the channel. You've heard me say that many, many times before. Subscribe button and the bell notification icon because if the scammers can hit that and get here early, so can you guys. All right, let's dive into the first piece and Cardano news, Coinbase Pro added ADA. Nine things to know before this. Basically, NASDAQ has put this out as well. It's making pretty big headlines that Coinbase Pro has added Cardano. You've heard that many, many times before. This isn't anything new. What we want to know about is market sentiment and the charts. So first thing I've got for you guys here, Cardano, looking at our trusty Google Trends, the yellow is Ethereum, red is NFT, blue is Cardano. Why am I looking at all of these? Well, I'm basically measuring how much energy is out there in the market against some of the bigger uh, bigger search terms which are being searched, all right? So Ethereum is on the drop, NFTs has been dropping, so just make sure here I've got worldwide past 90 days, and blue is Cardano, that's on the rise, so it's just breaking through its old top, so we're even doing technical analysis on these sort of charts, just these little line charts. NFT is really dropping off from its peak that it had about uh, last week. Ethereum still comfortably sitting at these levels just above its low of a few weeks ago. So Cardano, it's out there, but it's not like it was back in late February when it hit its all-time high top. Fear and Greed Index takes us to 71, and uh, further down we're at yesterday 72, last week at 70, last month 95. So the, the fear or the greed out last month was really high. Right now, we have cooled off a little bit and we're kind of feeling that across the market. So it seems like we're starting to build up into something. That's why we were looking to take some profits earlier this month and late last month in February. Uh, we talked about that on the channel. You guys can see that, you know about that. We're looking at, at a, a bit of a top there just to take some profits off the table in case the market decided to fall at that point because we know long-term that March tends to be a down month. Right now, we haven't seen too many cryptos breaking, or at least the majors breaking into new all-time highs, which means March can also be a lower top month. And a lower top, if you're looking at price charts and understanding that, is a bearish sign. Overall, bull market, I still believe is intact, but these sorts of cool-offs are really good for the market to get us a sustained long-term bull market. That's really what we want to see. So if you have to be patient and wait for some of your cryptos to increase in gains, just wait. There's going to be massive, massive things to come even from this point. So coin market cap, 1.7 trillion. Bitcoin still comfortably sitting above its $1 trillion market cap, 57,800. Ethereum, 17.8, and Cardano's just dropped to fourth place. Possibly by the time you see this, it might be in fifth as Tether begins to pick up uh, again. So Cardano's sitting at 39 billion, 400 million, $1.23. So at a reasonable level, they're just consolidating. Polkadot 35, another good one that we're looking at. And I may just touch on Chainlink at the end of this video because it's starting to get a bit of a shake on. Dollar cents, Bitcoin against the Bitcoin, not so much. Let's move across to the charts. I have Ethereum up here because I want to bring attention to this pattern here. So early January through to around early February before we took off, this is a sort of pattern that is not, it's bullish. And I wanna have a look at it against Cardano because Cardano has pushed to a, a new all time high. It's tanked for a little while. It was a, it was about two weeks down, two and a half weeks down. In Ethereum's case, it did push to a new all time high and then tank again. So really what I wanna look at here is these bars, which are potential shakeout bars. Now, Ethereum's bias was to the upside because it pushed to a new high on strong volume compared to the previous few days. So if I can move that there, you can see these days here, volume. Volume is really what you wanna look for. If you're watching content, make sure you reproduce these charts for yourself 
and look at the volume. If, if you're watching charts on YouTube and people aren't using volume, really question that because this is the driver of the market. It's how much activity is going on out there. And if we're not getting much activity, we need to understand, is that a good thing or a bad thing? In some cases, not much activity in a bullish sense means that there are no more sellers left and all of the big money or the, the players who are trying to manipulate the market are trying to test these lows down here. So what you can see here, they're trying to fish for any weak hands that they can fish out. And if they can't get there, then they know that the run is on and so do we. And because we're smaller and more nimble, we can act on these a lot faster. If you had to put a big position into some of these cryptos, you can't, you've got to take a fair bit of time, which is what these sort of plays are all about. It's a test, another test, another test, then it takes off. Now you might notice that I'm using the candles in today's video. So if you're new to the channel, thank you very much for stopping by. Generally, we sit on bars without color because we want to reduce the noise. There's enough noise out there in the crypto space. So if we can just get rid of as much noise as possible and just use what is important, then we're gonna have a higher success rate. Well, at least that's what we try to aim for. In this case, we're getting higher highs, higher lows, that obviously means the trend is up and then we get a breakout. Market continues to move up and finally we get a massive rejection just uh, late in February. This is for, for Ethereum. So let's move across to Cardano now. That Now that I've explained this, this was an upwards bias, let's have a look at Cardano. And uh, first I'm gonna hit up Cardano versus USD. So we're at $1.22 right now. You can see here, we were on this sort of upwards bias higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher high, higher low. All of a sudden we break down. We break down, we get a lower low. Volume is depleting, which means maybe the selling is drying up and we've seen a push to the upside. This was the day 18th, so just yesterday, this bar here was uh, Coinbase listing ADA. Now we did see early on intraday, the market push up nearly to the previous all time high. That is the first bearish sign, all right? I'm not bearish long-term Cardano's. Many of you may think I am because I do sell off Cardano uh, to funnel some profits into other uh, cryptocurrencies because sometimes the bags get too big. You gotta balance your portfolios out again. If you wanna do this long-term, if you wanna go in something heavy like Cardano, all in, don't play around with it, don't take any gambles, just hold it till the very end, that's another strategy. All right, but in this case, I'm looking at this shorter term and just to reduce the emotion. So just to understand what is going on. So if you're cool with that and you're ready for a potential fall of what we've seen so far of 22% from the top, potentially a 40%, it's no big deal in cryptocurrency because we're expecting this to go another 200, 300, 500%. If you're in the camp that you think Cardano is gonna get to $10 this bull market, then you're probably somewhere closer to six, seven, 800%. But that, that is a, a good reason to understand that if we do get a fall of around 40%, not to freak out, because it is entirely possible that we test 50% again. I don't think we'll get there. I think we might just trend sideways for a little bit, test some of these lows again, because these don't seem like they're, they're very solid. You know, we've had a little bit of a push down. Nothing really convincing on the turn apart from the news announcement, which has now subsided and the market has reversed. So from this point, some sort of bullishness, you can see there's a lot of closing prices here. So this is where a lot of trading takes place. <clears throat> Ideally, we want to see the market hold up at that point. A lot of trading took place. It broke down uh, with only a few days and then broke back above. So that's a good sign. This is a stronger thing to pay attention to because that was the all time high and we've had a lower top. So. Ideally, we want to see this at least come back to this point, hold some ground, and then begin to work its way higher. So that's the uh, bullish case. Bearish is if we don't see this level hold, and then we begin to break back down. That's what we don't want to see from uh, ADA. And so if that is the case, and we do get a breakdown, I'd expect 78 to sort of 85 cent level as the next test, because we've already tested 96 and it's held once. Hopefully we don't have to test it again, but if it does, I'm, I'm very comfortable with that 80 cent level. And for me, that's another good buying opportunity. The furthest I'd ever want to see this thing go is 60 cents. But I know many of you are probably saying it's never going to happen. There's plenty that has been staked. 
there's all these other announcements coming up. Sure, I get it. All right, we, we get it. We're looking for bullish and bearish cases to be able to hold our position and understand what the potential is because we don't know what's coming here in the black space here. The black space could shoot straight up. We could just take off from this point, you yeah, know, right up. We could do a few, little bit of that, a little bit of movement on the way up. But to be prepared, that's this is the whole point of the charts is to understand what comes next or at least plan for it so that we're not, we're basically not just leaving ourselves short and dropping the bags as it breaks because then all of a sudden it just pushes back above and you're thinking, shit, I have sold here. The market tests this level and before you know it, it's back here. And now you have to buy it back at this level. And so a lot of people will sell as it breaks down from this area and potentially as it breaks back above, maybe they lose 15% of their ADA. So if you don't understand that, hit us up in the comments. Someone will be able to answer that. This is basically around how people lose money in bull markets. Very, very simple to do and it happens time and time again. So I'm just trying to prepare a mental game because that's where it's won and lost in trading and investing. It's all mental and you guys have mentioned that. I've asked you on YouTube community posts. It very much is a huge mental game. Let's have a look. Cardano versus Ethereum and where we currently sit after yesterday's pump and subsequent push down. All right, so let's take a look back at what levels we could be expecting for another retest. And so the first ones, I'm going to throw this on a two day chart. This is not a two day swing chart. This is just a two day chart. We've broken through that level and we've come back and tested it once, bouncing off it with high volume. So this is a good sign long term, provided we don't come back to this level and retest it because that could mean the next level is being tested. All right, so we do want to see it hold up. And if that happens to hold up anywhere from here, uh, then it could be an, it looks like another good re-entry zone, especially against our Ethereum position. So next piece is just to get us a bit of a, a price target. So we're going to use our Fib again, Fib Retrace connected to the bottom to the top. These are the current extremes of a two day chart. So we've touched the 50%, which is a good sign. That's always a good level to hold. And then the next level is uh, 65,800, so 38%. So if we can get some days, some bars holding up here, something, then that's a good re-entry. We want to start to get back in. Why am I drawing straight lines? Yeah, we want to start getting back in as we can start to push higher. We start to break down from that point. These, this is the the no-go zone. If the if the price pushes back through into here, that's much weaker than if it pushes back into these zones, into the 38 to 61 percent. This is a stronger pullback area. This is a weaker pullback area. That's as simple as it is. I haven't seen many people talk about it like that, but if you can understand that, if it pulls back below the 38 percent, that's a weaker area. Underneath the 23, it's looking dire but in this area is very strong. Very good, very good. So Cardano Ethereum in a pretty good area at the moment. Uh, no confirmation just yet, but that's what we're waiting for. So we're going to keep covering day to day. Bitcoin, very similar position. Right now it's bouncing off some old highs. That was the previous high there. So I'm going to scroll in so we can see what we were playing with back in 2018. So look, we just saw a high. What has the market done here? It's punched off this top just a no man's land up here. We we're probably expecting it to at least test the 4,000 Satoshis, but we only got to 30, uh, about 3,200 Satoshis. Right now, this is good to be holding above this high. You know, we want to see support resistance holds. This was resistance. Now we're, we've seen it as support so far. We want to see this hold again. So that's looking pretty well for Cardano at the moment. Probably from here, if this news doesn't continue through, maybe we start to get a bit of a fade and we just work our way down until we get some other sort of news announcement or build up to the next hard forks, whatever's coming for Cardano. So that's what we want to see move up. And then we want to see it sit above this high. That That's the key to all of this. Uh, uh, Reaccumulation here and then a push above this high to sit on top of it. That is the sign of strength that we're looking for with Cardano Bitcoin. So across to our portfolios, Cardano at the moment, we are looking at, oh, this is in Aussie dollars now, so $1.60. So this is the chart here. This is what we have left in the portfolio, about $1,100. I want to wait for those positions to be buying more into the portfolio. So currently uh, we have 
let's see how many uh, ADA we have in this portfolio. I have about 1,400 ADA in this portfolio. So nothing huge, we get that. But overall, the idea is that we want to build these long term and continue to fill our position. So ideally, I want to see some sort of hold. I think that will happen in the next day or two. And then I'll be going in to get a little more with the cash we got left in this portfolio. And if I look at the other cryptos that are left in this portfolio, we'll have an idea of what else we could possibly move around to uh, continue growing. So we've grown 25%. We're at 13,000. Now we're at 16,000 Aussie dollars. I have Theta, which is something that I may look to sell for more Cardano. Uh, and I want to keep most of these smaller positions. I def definitely think Zill is going to push away. So I would then look to sell off uh, my Aussie dollars, maybe some Theta, maybe some Bitcoin or Ethereum as well, depending on how it sits up against Bitcoin and Ethereum price. So, so far looking pretty good. This portfolio up 25%. We started at one of the highs, not too bad. We've got some of the big positions there. Lastly, onto some of the bullish news on Cardano. Cardano 1 billion futures open interest shows ADA is a serious contender. Cardano's Coinbase listing helped push the open interest on its futures contract above $1 billion, a signal that investors are seriously interested in ADA. Now, I'm not going to get swept up in the hype. You know that this is a hopium free channel. So we want to make money from this thing. We want it to go up. We want all the good things for it. OK, but at the same time, that doesn't mean that it is serious for investors. It means it's serious for traders because it's a futures open interest. So investors, they're not that interested in this. They're trading. These guys are trading Cardano and is a very, very, very popular cryptocurrency to be trading. That's a good thing for us too, because it has a wider audience appeal. So it does appeal to a lot of people. That's the positive that I take from this. Not trying to read too heavy into a lot of these headlines, but it's still great nonetheless. We know that Ethereum was listed and it had huge, uh, huge numbers as well. Of course, Bitcoin's up there. Cardano, 1 billion futures open interest. So that's good stuff, really good stuff. So we just need to read between the lines sometimes and just see what it is for uh, for what the heading is trying to tell us. So moving on, Cardano graph plans to buy Cardano and Polkadot as Bybit lists ADA, DOT and Uni. So we're seeing this on one of a, a major exchange, a ma major trading exchange as well. So carrying on from the previous article, looking at futures contracts, Bybit lists these tokens, these cryptocurrency coins. Graph Blockchain has announced its plans to purchase ADA and Polkadot. Leading derivatives exchange Bybit is launching three new USDT trading pairs for ADA.Uni. All good news, people are interested in buying more of this. Billion dollar wealth manager Anthony Scaramucci says Bitcoin better than gold. Basically, all we need to know is what's in that headline and what this is. Skybridge Capital CEO. Are they a big company? Sure, admiring the billion dollar wealth fund managers. Now, it seems like there's a whole lot of billion dollar wealth fund managers at the moment and will continue to be, especially with all the money printing. So either, either way, this is good news again for cryptocurrency, good news for the crypto space. Quick look at this, a little bit of bad news for Filecoin, 4.6 million Filecoin double deposited on Binance. This is a developing uh, problem here, but it looks like they've got it under control and they've notified the developers of Filecoin and they're sorting that piece out. So just pay attention to that in case you do have some Filecoin. There was a drop on it yesterday after a big surge. I think this is, it's not FUD, it's its real, but I don't think it's going to be, uh, it's not gonna affect Filecoin long-term. Last thing that we got here, crypto.com becomes Visa principal member in Australia. So for Australians at this point, I'm sure the internationals have probably switched off by now, Aussies. Uh, we've got crypto.com visa principal member. So this is good stuff. We should be having the uh, crypto visa debit cards coming through to the Aussies very soon. So we'll be able to start tapping away. I got mine years ago. They they must have done an initial release. And so that's, that's why I've got mine. But now it looks like you can get that. So if you're interested, get across to CRO. The coin has been moving. It has moved from the, around those lows of 12, 13, 14 cents. Now it's hitting around 20, 21 cents again really good signs. They've got the 70 billion burn coming up. That reduces a hell of a lot of the supply. They're got, they've got some big partnerships. So check out crypto.com. You know the deal now. You can earn up to 8.5%, probably sitting somewhere around 4 to 6% on your cryptocurrencies and around 8 to 12% on your stable coins. These are for if you are staking a lot of CRO. If you stake none or a little bit of CRO, 
then you'll get around that four to six percent return. As we can see down here, just play with this calculator, really good website, you can play around with that. So Bitcoin, six and a half percent. If you're on flexible, staking less than 5,000, one and a half. So you wanna be staking, I think, at least the 50,000. If you're down here, then try and do the, the one month or the three months and you'll get a higher percentage rate. So check that out, I've got a link to this in the description down below. So that's the video for today. Cardano looking good, but let's just keep a close eye on those swing lows because they could really spell some disaster for, um, for the short term in Cardano. But the positive is there could be some great buying opportunities. If we get to those those levels, that's 60 cents, that would be amazing. You know, I'm sure there'll be so many people that want to scoop it up there, probably want to scoop it up at 80 cents as well. So if we get back down to those, I think that's those are hot buying areas. If we don't, then we've got a nice sideways accumulation for Cardano coming up. So pay close attention to it. We'll check it out on the channel tomorrow. You know what to do, hit that like button down below. Let's get the video to 3,000 likes. Goes a long way to helping the channel out. We're nearly at the 100,000 subscriber mark. So I've got a huge special coming up for you guys when we hit that. So be sure to hit the subscribe button, be subscribed to the channel, and I'll let you know that very, very soon. So make sure you're in that and uh, you could be in the running to win whatever it is I'm giving away at 100,000. All right, so subscribe, bell notification icon, scammers are in the comments sections. Take care, I'll see you at the next video or on Instagram. And until then, have more fun to get more done.